Hello, everybody. My name is Lat Mackey, and this is a bonus episode of Sequence Break with Enchantress of Numbers. One of the things that uh, struck me right away about your stream and your channel is how welcoming of a community you've created. And uh, yeah. I, I think it's so cool that that place is, that it's an inclusive place and you can depend, no matter who you are, you can enjoy yourself while in your stream. Um, is that something you consciously thought about or is that something that's important? Would you mind just, bring, what is that? What yeah. is that? <laughs> so, yeah, I guess... Um... There, I have some thoughts. <laughs> um, so I think uh, for me, like one thing that's it's important for to have a space that's um, welcoming. It's a, a queer space. As a lesbian trans woman on Twitch, like I, I want to be visible. I, I don't always talk a lot about that on my stream, but like I always stream with the LGBT uh, tag, and I always. Um, so I'm on this queer women game, uh, Twitch team and I, I stream under that and I have got like some links and stuff like that on my profile. And so like, I'm, even though if I'm not explicitly talking about it, I'm broadcasting out there that, Hey, this is a queer space. Um, and so like that in, on its own, I think, um, sends a message that, uh, if, if you yourself are queer or or otherwise marginalized, that you're probably going to uh, find a space here, and that that's kind of the message that I want to send. Um, I so it, it's important to me. Uh, growing up, there weren't always a lot of spaces like that where I felt comfortable in. So uh, having that space uh, on my stream for other people uh, is is really important to me. I think it's really cool. And if you don't mind chatting just a little bit about it, uh, you know, language it can be extremely clumsy, especially if you're an English speaker in North America. And growing up, the word queer was a word that I would never use because it was just like using the N-word or something like that. And in fact, I, I rarely have ever said the word myself. And I had to do some research that the community has kind of taken that word back. And so when I saw, when I first visited your channel and I saw it was a queer space, I was like, oh, oh, I, I, is this, is she, I didn't understand what that connotation, right. what that meant, because I'm 37 years old. So I'll just let you know, you like, it, it's a different time when you're growing up with some of this language. So like, right. you know, what, I, I love that you've created that and that, that even though it's not something you're going to, that it, it's something that the people can feel welcomed right away in at your channel. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, queer definitely has a history as, um, and I think largely it has been reclaimed, but at the same time, because of that history, uh, I would not, um, call someone queer or assign right. that label to someone mm -hmm. if they didn't embrace it themselves. Um, but, ha you know, having said that, I, I, it's common to use the word queer for the community hmm. um, where you're not like, even you, you're in the queer community, even if you don't specifically assign that label to yourself. Um, and uh, so like, I think that's important. I think um, like queer studies is an act actual academic <laughs> field of study. It's so really like that, it's, it's a word that is, <laughs> is used and it's, it's not used uh, with intent to harm in, you know, when you talk about the, the queer community or when you talk about like queer studies or when I talk about myself as a queer person, um, like it's a label I embrace, uh, but I know not everyone else does. And so I, I don't push that label on people, no. but it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a label I'm really comfortable with. So. And, and I think there are some things like that you've done, but also that we can do as a community that make a place or a space are welcoming right away for somebody who's just clicking in for the first time. And, right. you know, some of the easier ones are, you know, simply, simply using pronouns, something simple like that, that uh, I was, I was telling Neon that I was a little embarrassed that I hadn't thought of putting those into the podcast yet uh, until this episode. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so silly. It's like the, you know, one of the more basic things you could do to create a welcoming community. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so no, that, and that's a great thing, um, using pronouns. Uh, when when someone tells you in, in chat their pronouns, remembering to, to use those pronouns when referring to them. Um, other things that are really big are, um, you know, when, with Twitch, those rules pop up the first time when you mm -hmm. come into a stream and you go to click to type a message. It, before it lets you send it, it pops those rules up. 
Um, and, and in there, you can, you know, uh, put some rules to really help lay the groundwork as well. You can, you know, you say something like no bigotry of any kind, like that's, that's good, but saying like calling specific things out of like no homophobia, yeah, no transphobia, no racism, like being more specific with it, that's even better. And and if you go into also saying things like, you know, don't misgender other people in chat, stuff like that, like those those kinds of things uh, go a long way um, to uh, helping people, you know, as, as a queer person, when I come into a stream and I see those, those rules and I see that it specifically says in there, no transphobia, I feel a lot more comfortable participating in that community than um, if it's like, IDK, don't be a jerk. <laughs> Is it the golden rule, right? <laughs> Well, and, um, and and I think so. You know, me personally, as somebody of my age who is uh, who has, I, I don't want to say I'm learning, but I grew up in a little bit different time period where um, the. I still feel like the language is just too clumsy at times <laughs> to to really. Uh, 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 work in, in, in our modern environment. But there was, there were some incidences real recently in the past few months. And I, I want to first preface this by saying uh, one of the things I love about the speed running and the retro community is for the most part, we are an overwhelmingly accepting, uh, uh, in, uh community, but there, there's some instances recently when we're not going to give credence to anybody's uh, specific name, but most of you, if you're in our community, you know what we're talking about. And I, I think it's important that we do, you know, we identify and, and that we, we, we point out intolerance when it happens because we're doing things in public we just by gen, just by being on twitch we are doing something public and i think it's important to point out some intolerance and I, I i'm glad to see that people of the community have done so in such a public way and i'm curious if you've had any of those experiences or, or how does that help move the cause forward or move move us towards welcoming right. environments yeah so lots of lots yeah. of things so, to address a lot there, there. <laughs> so. apologies no 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 worries um so uh, just first thing about like you saying you're you're still learning and stuff. Like that. And and honestly, when it comes to you know me, I don't know everything or or other allies. You know, like the the biggest mistake I feel like anyone can do is to assume that you know it all and that you're <laughs> you're not still learning. And so um, like I'm still learning about stuff too, and um, and it's good. And when, when I make a mistake, I, I expect people to like point out like, Hey, that wasn't cool what you said. And, mm -hmm. and I'll be, you know, like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, you know, I didn't realize, or I, I need to educate myself more on, on this particular topic. Um, and, and so it's, I think a lot of people are worried that they're going to say the wrong thing and then, um, get shut down or, you know, whatever, kicked out of the community or, or whatever because they said the wrong thing. And and it, it's really uh, the way you react to being corrected is it speaks volume about your character. If, if, if I were corrected and I'm like, no, and I'm going to double down on this one <laughs> that I just said, like, that's the wrong way to handle that. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, like, you know, taking the time to listen to what someone has to say and like, oh, I didn't realize the language that I used hurt you. And I'm so sorry that I did. I need to learn, you know, not to, I need to not do that, first of all. And then I need to learn why I shouldn't do that so I don't do it again. Um, and, and, you know, communicating those things, uh, like, that's the way you build bridges across communities and, and really move forward, uh, in, in a positive way. And then, um, talking about, uh, the sort of intolerance that we have seen in, in the retro community in some spaces, like that sort of doubling down is exactly what they did. <laughs> yeah, um, the exact opposite. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so that was the thing, but there, I should also point out like, um, the, there's this concept known as the paradox of tolerance. And so um, you mentioned that my my space, uh, my stream is a space where everyone can feel welcome um, and, and accepted. And I would actually say I, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good point. And, and I don't want my space to be a space where literally everyone feels welcome right. because... I don't want bigots welcome there. I don't want transphobic people welcome there. I, you know, if, if I 
basically, if, if you try to make a space that you're going to say, okay, everyone is welcome, just be nice, like, there's going to be stuff going on in the community where people are going to be making mar other marginalized people in your community uncomfortable, and you're probably not going to see it. And it's so then your space is going to slowly gravitate towards that toxicity, towards and, and away from that acceptance of you know queer people of minorities of disabled people um and so like it's it's really important to uh you know it, you can't tolerate that intolerance you can't um welcome people who are going to make other people in your community feel uncomfortable and so like i, I that's a big thing that i really pay attention to i have uh, a friend in my community who had come to me one time and was telling me, well, there's this person who's hanging out in your stream that when they're there, I don't feel comfortable hanging around because they've actually like stalked me and mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. And so like hearing things like that and taking it very seriously and, you know, I, I banned that person and they've not come back to my community since then. And I banned the person who was doing the stalking, not the person who came to me about it. Just so we're clear. <laughs> That's a good, good, good uh, specification there. Um, but yeah, so like those kinds of things where like I, I want to be the kind of person and the and have the community where uh, if someone's making people feel uncomfortable, like I'm, it's you know I'm playing a game when I'm playing TGM. Yeah, I can often respond to chat, but I can't see everything. Right. And and I also don't know what happens outside of my stream, but if there's someone who's hanging out in my community and making other members of my community uncomfortable, like I want to know and I want to deal with that. So, <laughs> well, and, because right, yeah, because correct. like like I said, I I don't want it to be a welcoming place for those people who would make you know queer people, minorities disabled people uncomfortable so no i'm i and i appreciate you uh clarifying that and also calling me out on it because like that's that's just a good point that it is you're right it is taking an active step it's not something that's as simple right. as holding the doors open um in my own personal stream i'm very big on free speech and people should i, I don't want to say you know a lot of uh, a lot of streamers rightfully so don't want to talk about any sort of political issues or politics in my in their stream and i'm i open the door to that kind of stuff because like to your point that it, it, to be, to, we have to practice. We have to be clear, and we have to, we have to be able to take action upon those who are using words that I would not allow, and they're similar probably to the words you wouldn't allow in your stream. And you're right; it does take you have to be active about it. And right. having, you know, I think some of the more streams that I would say are welcoming spaces for, to your point, the LGBTQIA plus communities, the minorities, disabled people ha are, are moderated. They're moderated by, you know, you have moderators in your chat and things yes. like that, that, that are active people who are actively looking out for those kind of things and looking out for others. Yeah. yeah and, it, and I would also say like it, uh, if you're not a member of the LGBT community yourself, um, you really should like find if you can find LGBTQ people to be moderators on your stream, because there are certain dog whistles that people will say that if you don't know what they're really saying, they might sound like okay things to say, but those, they sort of, they're dog whistles and signal to, you know, queer people or trans people that you're not welcome. And so, that you know having people members of those marginalized community on your moderation team uh they'll be able to see those when you don't and deal with them it's so funny you mentioned that because i didn't real I, I i one of my mods is a member of the community and i didn't uh i didn't first of all i i didn't know that she was i it didn't matter to me but secondly she i have learned something new from her every single week it seems like because you're right there are dog whistles to your point or 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 words that at first don't strike a chord with anything, but that's because I'm not a member of the, the community like that. So it's, right. it's, that's super helpful. That's a really good piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so let's see, um, there, let's see. Uh, I think we kind of cover like how important is the language to inclusiveness? And I, and I, I think that, that we, 
really just hit upon that quite a bit, that the language you use, the things that you do. Oh, I know what I want to talk. Here we go. I'm remembering now. Um, one of the things uh, uh, about being a part. So Power Up With Pride was a, a, a marathon that I've supported for with donations and things like that for quite a while. And I was hesitant or didn't know that I could participate in a marathon like that, that because I am quote unquote, not a member of the, the community. And I, little did I know there are these things called allies and they're just as important as apparently as, right. as anyone else. How can somebody get involved with helping causes such as like Power Up With Pride that, you know, that, that things like that? Yeah, so Power Both Pride is a great um, community, and they I know they took a break from, uh, did not do a winter, uh, which um, a little bit sad, but also uh, sad. the the staff for the the event needed a break, and I think it's that good. it's it's good that they recognized like oh, you know, it putting on a marathon takes a lot of work <laughs> and. And so not pushing themselves uh, too hard and, and spreading themselves too thin to try to squeeze in another marathon when, you know, really just having a bit of a break to for mental health, like that's important. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, like you said, watching and donating, those are good things. Getting to know the um, community, like there's a discord for Power Up With Pride, getting involved with that and and getting to know the people behind it, that's how you can then like um, get involved to to that level of um, submitting and or like potentially like being a moderator or helping out with, you know, restreams or hosting or whatever, like just, you know, finding the community like that, getting involved, Discord's a great way to do that to, to you know get in there meet the meet the members learn from them and and see the where they need help um one of the things i could say in general i've noticed about speedrunning and retro communities is how charitable we can be and so there are some wonderful charities that thankfully power Up pride has 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 supported but it it, it it took me down the rat hole of finding all these other great uh, there are so many great causes and charities out there. If it's something you, you can and you wanted to support financially, you could. But you, to your point, just being a part, a uh, retweet, you know, some things just being active about about supporting good causes. Yeah, yeah. And that's like um, the other thing is if you know um, events are run by queer staff, like even if they're not necessarily supporting um, a, a queer specific charity, but knowing that there's queer staff there, that's a good sign that it's going to be a, a good marathon to get involved with. So totally agree. And I think you've, I think it, it's, it's been a little bit of a slow process, but you've seen some of the larger marathons start to take on some of those, uh, uh, what we're, I guess we called norms, but things that should be a part, uh, to make people feel safe and included in, in certain marathons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you, if you, I don't know, maybe you don't have any thoughts. I don't know, but I thought I'd ask anyway, you know, the, in the news, the past year or two, three now, uh, we've started, we've started to see corporate culture, uh, as in regards to game development and video game development be put on the hot seat, rightfully so, thankfully <laughs> that, yes. uh, you know, and I, as a developer, you work in, in this industry. Um, uh, do you, uh, is that something you've experienced personally? And is, is it something that you are seeing any change in? So, yeah, I guess, um, I, I mean, I know I, I've heard from other people, uh, it, like, I work on a pretty small team. Mm -hmm. There are, what, like, six developers, uh, seven developers <laughs> at, at my company. Yeah. Um, I'm the only woman. So, like, <laughs> uh, uh, on the development team, we do have, uh, uh, shortly after I was hired, uh, we hired another woman hardware developer oh, cool. um, at my company. So um so like we're like the the two women in engineering <laughs> at, at the company um but like but my my company definitely has this strong commitment to diversity and and you know fixing some of those things um <laughs> and it, i mean it's it's hard we have like 60 employees so <laughs> Um, we, we can't they just go out and like, okay, we're going to hire 10 women and like right. increase the size of our staff by, you know, 12%. Yeah, not exactly. But okay. So, but you know, you, you, you sparked something in me and, and that, you know, to increase 
women, minorities, uh, more people to get involved in the industry. It, it, it has to start somewhere. And obviously, right. you know, hiring is one way to do it. But is there any way, I mean, have you had any thoughts about like inspiring the next generation to get involved? Oh, oh yeah, actually. Um, so there's, uh, I, I'm at my company, I'm on the like, uh, charitable community or whatever we we had like all the community outreach and charity stuff that we do and um here this coming week uh i'm actually meeting with a uh local charity that their whole purpose is to uh it's basically for getting more girls and minorities into STEM fields and more specifically technology. And so, uh, so I'm, I'm meeting with them this coming week to figure out how my company can have a partner, form a partnership with them and get involved in to, uh, foster, uh, the development of more, uh, girls and other, you know, minorities to, uh, the technology space. So, see that's and that's the kind of active thing that I think is so important to uh, to get the next generation involved because it it it, it it's going to be tough for uh, a fifty year old to to change industries and careers and things like that. Right. But uh, you know, it doesn't mean things can't can't have to stay this way. You know. Right. Well, and then there's also the stuff like what was it uh, Riot Games? Are they the yeah. ones that have had all? <laughs> yes, I have some friends uh, who worked at Riot. So. <laughs> toxic sexist yeah. community at, at their company has kind of been on blast a little bit and like um that's i think that kind of thing is, i mean that's definitely a, a common thing in um the industry it's not uh as i've experienced i so i'm in like the midwest and i haven't really firsthand experienced a lot of that but i um you know I have friends who like uh, one of them told me about like, oh, she went to on an interview for a job at this company and they had 40 engineers, all men, mm-hmm. and she didn't get called back <laughs> and they ended up hiring and right um, stuff like that. Or, you know, you you have enough p- friends in the industry, you hear stories like this, um, I think uh, if for as as progressive as you know, things like the Bay Area, uh, you hear about, like, there's progressive <laughs> supposed to be. Right. I mean, you still hear about these stories, so they're, uh, maybe it's it's more uh, impressions than reality. Well, but uh, and, uh, but to tie this back into what we were talking about earlier, it's gl- I'm glad that we're hearing these stories, and these things need to be called yeah. out. Uh, when they happen. And it, it, it's it's it, 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 the only way, in my opinion, that things get changed is if if things come to light, if we highlight these right. certain these things that are happening. Riot's a great example because it was very public and it should have been uh, the some of the culture that was happening there. For a game, say what you will about the league community and everything like that. The game is played by a lot of different people and a lot of people like the game. So knowing what's behind that and how it's coming to the public is super important, I think, <laughs> you know, so because things don't right. change unless we, we get involved like this, we call it out. And I definitely agree. <laughs> so I appreciate that, 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 that you know, we, we do some of these things. Uh, and I, I think to your point going forward is that, you know, don't be afraid, not don't be afraid, encourage us all to play a more active role. It doesn't just happen yeah. by sitting around and watching this stuff happen. Right. No, you got to take the time to like, uh, you know, mentor people. You've got to take the time to, you know, volunteer like with different organizations that are centered around um, getting girls, getting um, other minority members into uh, STEM fields. It's, it's about like, I mean, I think it's, it's also, if you're a teacher in those fields, um, being aware of not only the messages that you're putting out there, but the messages like the interactions that your students have with each other that, um, because like the thing is you look, so game development back in the eighties, like, a lot there were way more women in game development in the 80s uh they were you know pushed out of the industry um and you you hear stories about women and and why they leave tech 
and um it's it's not because they're not talented enough right. it's not because they're not good enough to do it it's because you know they don't get recognized for their achievements it's because they uh when they're dealing with sexual harassment and they try to report it then they get blackballed and well that's the other person is so well known we can't trash his career mm -hmm. and you know all of these things like those um being aware of those those things and pushing against them when you when you're in a position of power if some if a woman comes to you saying like hey this other person who is big in the community is really awful and is sexually harassing me and other women and whatever like listen and don't like like everyone talks about how like oh you know the the men's careers when <laughs> I, i'm ready for for anyone's career to to for any harasser's career to have been ended because it hasn't happened <laughs> well and but and and that's it, once again i think it highlights so importantly here that to treat it, i i used to at my old job i used to be a manager and to treat everyone as an equal is not easy. You have to actively do something to do so. Right. You have to be aware of your situations. And I worked in an industry that was uh, that is predominantly women. So I, I was in a little bit unique situation, but it still takes having to think about what do you want your team to look like? What do you, you know, when, you, when you're doing all these things. And if you're in a person who is in these position to do, to make these decisions, you need to think about it. And and I think the, the more that we make all everyone aware, but to your point, People need to take this next step now because you're right. Who, <laughs> I mean, as much as, oh my God, I, I could go off and use a lot of bad words when I'm talking about somebody like Weinstein, the guy still isn't in jail yet. So to your point, right. <laughs> what does that say about us as a, as, a, as a society at this point that something like that hasn't happened? So on that upbeat note, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, am I missing anything or is there anything that, that I haven't covered that you'd want to speak about? Yeah. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the um, how Twitch emotes can be used um, a lot. And uh, so like for one example is uh, like the Pepe emotes, like the um, the frog with the feels x man whatever uh emotes they're very popular on twitch um and just how like uh those have also been used by like alt-right groups and stuff like that and and so like the the artist who made them has actually come out against that usage and stuff but in some way the that image is still kind of tainted and and i think the usage of them tends to make some some people particularly queer people uncomfortable <laughs> um and so like as a result that uh those are emotes that i've banned in my own chat and i think um, that's great I, you know one of the things when you um i, I applied once for um gdq hosting and they have yeah. some of those things that they're testing you to see if you're aware of them before that you would say them on the air and right. I, I think as that education as that screen process has gotten better they they're really particular and and, and i'm you know things like that like I guess I'm I, how, you know, I'm glad that is there a place or is there a, how, how can one go about educating themselves about <laughs> some of those things? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know that there's a good place. I mean, I think be existing in queer spaces, existing in, um, you know, spaces with where marginalized people, marginalized communities are is a good way to learn about that stuff. Um, I think like. Another one that there's the um, there's an emote of it's a very popular laughing emote um, on <laughs> on Twitch, and the person who uh, whose face that is um, so like there's some so he uh, he did die of cancer which is awful, um, but he also was real big in like the Gamergate movement. And he also uh, harassed some of my friends who are trans people and stuff like that. And so like, um, 
So, it, it, and, and that's one of those things where it's it's a very popular emote and a lot of people like to use it, but also it's knowing the background on the things that the person did. And even though he died and even though it was from something terrible like cancer, it doesn't really erase his actions that he he did in life. And well, and, and I think so, that's that's and that can help make us aware of why it might uh, trigger or anger uh, uh, people. Right. And I think that's totally fair to I mean, because these things become a symbol. They're they're bigger than the person right. that they're, you know, um, are there are there other emotes that perhaps tell the other side of the story that are the more positive or ways to support, uh, 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 you know, marginalized uh, people? That's a good thing. I think a lot of those tend to be like, um, so, you know, Twitch tends to do something during like June for Pride Month mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like those, those things are good or like the emotes that queer streamers make themselves um, that are, unfortunately, those tend to be the ones that you have to subscribe for <laughs> <laughs> that are not just Twitch global emotes. So I, do, I don't have like a real good example um of that that's like a i like the pride month. I, emote. that's a great point though the pride month uh, and it's great to see so many rainbow emotes out there during uh that time period, right which is pretty awesome yeah yeah no i think that's great and i think like i mean there's also some other ones just recently i learned about i, I don't know the full background on it um but like it's this is more of a thing in like the kaizo uh mario rom hack community is there's uh, I don't know who made the first one, but there are these rock emotes and I don't really even, I've seen them, but I don't know exactly what they are. Uh, but apparently the, the first person who made them has also been kind of uh, harassing a lot of trans people in the Kaizo community and stuff. And so like, if it's not like there are all one person has these emotes, it's like one person started it and then ever, a bunch of other people like, made another emote like to look like that or whatever and um and so then like they're in a bunch of people's channels and i a bunch is subjective <laughs> sure you know, sure in your experience like, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean and also you got to compare the size of the community yeah. like a bunch in the kaizo community <laughs> versus the speedrunning community as a whole <laughs> right you know uh, so um you know but, what so like those those ones are, are emotes that uh, particularly uh, trans Kaizo streamers are really uncomfortable in seeing and, and have banned in a lot of their channels and stuff like that. So, you know, one thing you mentioned earlier, and I think this is uh, I think it's helped me personally, is that following uh, um, many people who are a part of, of, of the trans community or of the LGBT the greater community, um, you right. get to see things that are shared that that are are, are affecting people. And so one that yeah. happened recently that I was completely unaware of that I, I should be, but I, I wasn't, was some of the hands gestures you'll see in pictures, particularly this this WP thing that was happening with people's right. hands and had no idea that was a thing until people yes. who I was following on in my in the community were, were sharing that right. and calling it out, you know? Yeah, and, th and that's one that is, has kind of a weird history where, like, um, if you kind of look at it, it, it seems like it sort of started as, like, a 4chan joke to, like, make it a racist symbol, but right. then also... So then that sort of gives cover for the people who use it because like, oh, it's just a joke or whatever. But then like there comes a point where when is, you know, what's the difference between ironic bigotry and actual bigotry when you can't tell the difference? And and so like they're the people who do it and say that it's it's a joke, they're definitely signaling something. Mm -hmm. and, and, so. No, and that's a good point is that it's not black and white. You know, there is, right. you know, I, I have, I, there are some satirists who I just absolutely adore who are able to satirize some of these things in a way that makes you think and opens up your mind and is absolutely moving the cause forward. So, you know, right. to your point, it's not black and white. And this is where I think following, getting involved in social media, but other areas and different communities has helped educate myself. Right. Yeah, um, no, definitely. And I think like that's a thing where, you know, following people, you know, I, I'm i not Jewish myself, but I follow some Jewish people on, on Twitter. And so the, and just from paying attention to their conversations, I've learned that there's a lot of, you know, I've learned a lot about anti-Semitic dog whistles that I didn't know before. And 
you know, stuff like that. And and so like that's an area where I'm I'm not really part of that community, but by paying attention, I can educate myself. So. Absolutely. One of the greatest things, it's just the greatest things. One of the things that's helped me quite a bit, obviously, is all the people that I've been fortunate enough to meet in the speedrunning community, but also following um, uh, marginalized journalists and, and, and people who are in the public sphere, uh, uh, specifically women journalists. I, I, I have been educated to, to, uh, to open my mind to completely new and different things just by following people who are not me, <laughs> you know, and I think that's, right, right. you know, that's a great way to see a different perspective and open your mind and, and start to become aware of these things that are around us. Agreed. Yeah, no, that's definitely a good thing. That's like, I periodically with like my Twitter, I will go through and try to like, find, you know, underrepresented people in my Twitter follows and try to follow people from that group. So um, there's just as a way to sort of make sure that I'm not like, only following people who are exactly like me. On, on an earlier episode of the podcast, uh, Pidge Zero One joined, and and I love her Twitter, obviously. But one of the things that she uh, made me made me start to think about is culturally. You know, we a lot of times uh, we start to experience things just as people in the United States because this is where we are. But culturally, things are are, are much different, and so to be aware of cultural differences and and to at right. least be empathetic towards uh, uh, cultural differences, so that we can you know speak a common language, or at least understanding of, of each other. Yeah, no, definitely. That's, um, I, I think, especially being in the United States, there's a very American centric <laughs> view that we just sort of have. And it's it's definitely good to, to do things to combat that. <laughs> I completely agree. And I'm, I'm glad you've uh, made me aware just of some of these emotes I had no idea. Are there any others that, that possibly might have uh, you wanted to mention? Because I, these are some things I was not even aware of. Yeah, there. so there was um, the I'm one that I'm not really a big fan of that was, is uh, the Dan's Game emote. <laughs> um, and not because of that emote specifically, but just because of the person, the mm -hmm. streamer. Yeah. Um, and so how there was a thing at a GDQ event. Um, they People in chat were basically subscribing to him specifically <laughs> so they could spam one of his emotes to attack a trans woman on stream. And so, and then his reaction to it was to like, he had, so I think the emote that he had at that point was a, um, like a cartoon one, a, a cartoon version of it. But then he had an older one that had been an emote that he'd since replaced. That was actually him in a wig and stuff. And, um, so then, like, rather than, you know, apologizing for people using his um, emotes to harass a trans woman, he decided, oh, I'm going to make money off of this and bring back the classic one version of this emote at my $25 subscription tier. Um, and so... <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you're calling that out because that's the kind of thing specifically that is the kind of behavior that we shouldn't tolerate as a community. And we have right. to be active about calling it out because that's, I wasn't aware of that. And I'm sorry I, that, that that kind of thing happens. I, I That's the kind of stuff that I can feel my blood pressure starting to rise right. by the way, when you mention things like that. Yeah. And so like, there's nothing specifically about the global Dan's game emote. That's really problematic. It's just, the person that it represents that I, I find personally problematic. And so. Absolutely. Uh, we, 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 yeah. we shouldn't, we should not be tolerant of this kind of behavior as a community. Right. It's, it's deplorable to say the least, but uh, yeah, but it affects sure. many people, you know, it's uh, especially, I can't even imagine the streamer who was that the target was, I, I don't know the story behind it, but that's, that's, I, my, my heart goes out to, to them. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, any others that you'd like to share? Cause I think this is really, this is a kind of interesting stuff this is helping um, me. I think yeah, no, those are the main ones, I think. Um, and the the Pepe emotes are hard because there's so many of them and, and a lot of like um a lot of partners have their own takes on them and stuff mm. like that. And so um that's that's the thing when I if I see a, a streamer and they've got their own version of one as their like a subscriber emote, that may <laughs> that's that's definitely like even if they don't realize it, it's a. I take that as a signal that I'm not super welcome there. So, 
Uh, that's good to know. And, uh, you know, the the older I get, the more that I want to participate and, and call, not call, it, calling out, it, it's, it has a negative connotation. It's it's if somebody you care about may not have, uh, like myself, who's ignorant to the cause, uh, may not understand. Right. And, and that's where a DM goes a long way, especially in our community. Yeah. DMs can really right. um, affect people quite a bit because sometimes people aren't aware of their behavior for real. Right. No, for sure. And that's, um, I've heard that referred to as like calling in rather than <laughs> calling go. out yeah. where you're like, um, rather than like, you know, calling someone out and being like, oh, you're such a terrible person for <laughs> doing this. Like, like doing it in a more constructive way where like, hey, maybe you didn't realize this about the thing that you're doing and that actually affects some people and here's why. And, you know, it would mean a lot if you did something else. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you from personal experience, when somebody sends a personal message to you, it carries a ton of weight. Um, it, has, it, it means quite a bit that somebody took the time to say something to you. And and because all of us who stream are doing this to the public, like we, we are affected by public opinion, So especially an individual. Yep. So it, it doesn't hurt. It's, it's definitely a constructive and positive thing to reach out. For sure. Awesome. Okay. Is there anything else I'm missing on that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that pretty well covered it. We went more in depth than I was expecting to. So. Well, it sparked a good conversation. So that's exactly, yeah, I no, think, the kind of I thing agree. this needs. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. If you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to share it with family, friends, and leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. All of those go a really long way to helping out the podcast. Thank you so much. Have a good one.